the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for June 20th. Well, not much is different at all since our update yesterday, day 172 of the year so far, and no storms are active anywhere around the world. The current total, therefore, has stalled at 29. In the Atlantic, though, we do have a 20% chance of development for an area in the northern part of the ocean off the US east coast. That's the 20% that we've marked in the three to five day period. And in the Eastern Pacific, we've marked a 20% area uh, towards the Central Pacific region, um, and that could develop as it moves further towards the west. Models still think that we'll get development later on down the line. No storms active in the Western Pacific at this point, but there is one or two hints that maybe we'll see some kind of development of Japan next week. Um, we're not sure enough to give it a designation anywhere yet though. And in the Southern Hemisphere we have two areas of interest that we've marked right now at 10%, some decent model agreement for potentially a tropical cyclone in the South Indian Ocean, or maybe two. So in the North Atlantic, the main feature in the uh, tropical zone at least, um, is the dominating Saharan air there, the uh, dust layer that is uh, moving across the Atlantic and uh, if it was peak season that would decimate any tropical cyclones that are active over there but it's early on and this will probably be a fairly short-lived wave, at least this particular episode. The Gulf of Mexico looking uh, pretty quiet there as well. The Eastern Pacific, you can see again that line of thunderstorms extending all across the basin really. Um, still rather far south though, you would expect them to be a little bit further north by now, um, but it is very rare that by the end of June we haven't seen a significant tropical cyclone. I wouldn't call Amanda particularly significant in terms of what it actually was, although its impacts were quite severe. In the Western Pacific there's quite a few thunderstorms bubbling up over the Philippines and I think they've actually marked that as a low pressure area right now, um, Pegasa, uh, just to the west of Luzon. Apart from that, not much going on at all, that usual frontal system that you see at this time of year south and over Japan, uh, extending in from China. In the South Pacific, a few thunderstorms blowing up over the tropical zones again near the um, Solomon Islands and far to the north of uh, Fiji as well. Uh, and in the Indian Ocean, um, quite hard to see the outlines, but on the right hand side there is Indonesia and those two areas of interest in the next five days near the end of the forecast period, one near Indonesia and one near Diego Garcia. Sea surface temperatures in the eastern Pacific are starting to book up uh, just off the coast of Mexico by the looks of things. Uh, same too for the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, the Caribbean rather warm, always has been. The Atlantic main development region looking decent. Still a cool tongue pulling in in the subtropical zone. And that's below average as well in, in anomalistic terms. The Indian Ocean uh, fairly warm there as well, 29 to 30 degrees Celsius. And the South China Sea piping hot. The Philippine Sea, fairly hot, and generally the Western Pacific is ready to go. So again, looking at those sea surface temperature anomalies, still that very clear La Nina effect there, which uh, honestly is extending up a little bit there as well. Some cool temperatures to the east of Hawaii as well compared to the average, and the subtropical Atlantic. Everywhere else though is pretty much above average, including the tropical and equatorial Atlantic. On June 20th, 1984, there was a tropical depression making landfall in Mexico. Pristina was a Category 2 pictured, and Tropical Storm Wynn had just formed in the Western Pacific and was moving towards the west. Pristina was peaking at this point with winds of 105 miles per hour on what was a fairly energetic start to the Pacific hurricane season in that year, much more than what we've had this year. Also in 2013, Tropical Storm Barry made landfall in Mexico um, after moving through the Yucatan. So then, uh, the next name this year in the Atlantic will be Dolly. In the Eastern Pacific, we're looking for Boris. Christina is back again this year as well. The Central Pacific on list one, the next name is Hone, followed by Iona. In the Western Pacific, Sinlaku is next up, followed by Hagripit, and in the North Indian Ocean on the brand new List 1, Gati is next up, followed by Nivar. In the Southwest Indian Ocean, um, the next name on the list is Kundai. If that happened to form out of one of those 10% areas, then uh, 
will look pretty dumb with only 11 days to go and the animation coming out just after this bulletin, but never mind that. The Australian region, Imogen is next, and in the South Pacific, it's Yolanda. That's all for now, we'll be back with another tropical weather bulletin tomorrow. Check out our new look cyclone tracker on the Force 13 website for the latest up-to-date information. You can also find us, of course, on our YouTube channel, search Force 13, and also on Facebook and Twitter, Force 13 at Force 13 on Twitter for the latest updates. You can also help the project become even better by becoming an Ultimate Fan on YouTube. To see the full list of Ultimate Fan benefits and to join, visit youtube.com forward slash force 13 slash join. With a special thanks to our top supporters this month. You can also check out our growing merch store so you can show Force 13's colours wherever you go. You can also find a link to our Discord server underneath this video in the description.